Okay, um, this is the second part of the tutorial for exercise three. Um, and it's going to focus on these steps. Um, I'm going to um, update it just a little bit on scaling. I know at the end of the other video uh, there was a scaling issue, so I'll just rectify that so we can do that a little bit more exactly using the scale factor. Um, and then run through bringing the STL file um, into Slicer. There's a couple steps in between here that are um, important to make sure that the scale is accurate. Um, Slicer isn't the best at bringing in the files at a one-to-one one -one scale, I guess, in, in terms of uh, from the STL file. So um, we'll have to make some adjustments there. Um, and then getting into the um, construction technique um, and um, making some adjustments and, of course, um, saving the files and, and exporting a DXF so you can bring that into AutoCAD and run through the layering steps as you had previously. Um, so just stepping back into Rhino quickly. You can see here I have, um, well, a couple um, models here that are scaled down to eighth inch. This is the full scale. And so I was scaling this before in the last um, video, um, knowing that this was 11 by 17. But if I wanted to scale it to uh, scale factor exactly to 1 8th, um, I could do that as well. It's a little bit more exact. You're not always going to have an 11 by 17. And so I'll go into the scale tool, point of origin, I'll click this same point. What I was doing before is I was going ahead and clicking the uh, next um, reference point. Um, but instead of that, actually, you can see here it's asking for a scale factor or a reference point. So I actually I have this origin point. And I'm just going to type in uh, my scale factor for eighth inch is basically 8 times 12, which is 96, so 1 over 96. If it was quarter inch, it would be 1 over 48. So I'm just typing that in, I hit enter, and then I have it scaled <coughs> appropriately. So just um, a little bit of review there on scaling. Now, uh, we exported, um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Delete. Okay, um, previously we exported the base and the intervention itself, and there's one issue um, with, with that. Um, what I have here is, um, what I've actually done is taken the base and uh, I booleaned out um, uh, the area that where the intervention actually sits. The reason why I'm doing that is I want this as a reference to scale once I get into Slicer. So how I did that, um, go ahead. Uh, inside here. I'm not too concerned inside. We want the same the perspective. Just bringing it up. And I'll <coughs> since I did an object snap, it's um, up. It's at z equals zero, so I have to push this down. It it down. All right. Or uh, object snap back on. There we go. Now I'll select these two, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in two objects until I get just the frame. I'll right click. So this is what I'm actually going to export for um, bringing it into Slicer. Um, it's a lot easier in terms of scaling. You could just bring this in, um, but it would uh, it's just a little bit more straightforward if you have this frame. Um, so I've already created that file. So again, just to walk through the steps, um, I'll select this file. Export selected. STL files are already selected here. And it was, I just called it intervention uh, A because it had the frame. It was different than the first. And I'll just go ahead and save over that. That's fine. And okay. Okay. Um, all right. So now I'll open up Slicer. Again, this is the freestanding 
slicer here. Okay, so when you first come in, it's going to look like this. I'll select import. I'm going to start with the base first, and then we'll get into the intervention. Um, so the base, I'll say oop, open, and I forgot to select my Z as being the up axis, so I'll have to do this again. Base, <coughs> Z, there we go. Okay, and now you'll notice here there's manufacturing settings. This is basically the material that you're going to be using. Then there's the object size and then construction technique. First, we want to make sure that this is scaled appropriately. And you can see here, eight inches um, for the width um, and then 5.176. This is incorrect. We know that this is 11 by 17, so I have to change this 17. <clears throat> and automatically it's set for uniform, so it automatically went to 11 by 17. So now I know that this is at the right scale. It's basically the reason why I had the frame and the intervention itself, and we'll go through that. Um, so the next thing that you want to do is um, create a manufacturing setting. So I'm going to hit this pencil here, and it's going to bring up a dialog box. And so there's a, a bunch of presets that are here, but we want to be able to create one that we'll use for... Um, the um, for the tech shop so for chipboard and for the cardboard um, for this base this is going to be cardboard so I'll select cardboard um, if I wanted to create one you can see the settings that are here um, uh, uh, let's see uh, 18 by 32 the thickness of the material 0.125 um, for the eighth inch um, and then I just left these uh, margins as they were, um, and I didn't play around with these offsets or anything. Um, so to create that, basically I hit a plus, add material, and now I can make adjustments to this. It's unnamed, so of course I can name it something, um, whatever makes sense for you. Uh, let's say card, word. Okay, so now and I can go to these settings and make my adjustments. So I can say, okay, well, I want that to be 32. I want this to be 18. The width, you could be more exact with the width in terms of what your material exactly is, but one, two, five for the eighth inch. And again, the margins and everything I'll, I'll leave. So that's how you create. It's basically like setting up a new sheet for printing. Instead of that, you're actually using some kind of card um, stock, something that's more three-dimensional, of course. So I'll go ahead and select uh, this. <coughs> Done. Um, oh, I have to actually select it here. Go down window, got my first cardboard. There that is. So now what it's asking for is a construction te technique. For this, for the base, we'll just use um, stacked slices. So automatically took all of those and stacked them up and this is how it would look out and then you have the patterns here. So this, this is actually pretty straightforward for the base. So the next step is I'll take um, select get plans and here are all the plans based off of the sheets. Um, you could rearrange these if you want to try to get more out of a sheet but because of the size is basically how it'll work out. And I'll select DXF here at the bottom. And I want to export to my computer. And I have to get to the right folder. Oh. Okay, so here I will say, we give it a date. And I'll just say, um, something that I know, recognize what it is. And um, it's going to zip these together, so these will all be in a zip file. I'll say OK. And so that should be good. 
So now if you just select or hit one of these um, pull downs then you'll get back to this and I want to bring in um, the other file. So if I just go ahead and select this, I don't have to save this. You can save this if you want to go back to it. So there is that option. Um, just go into save. Um, yeah, this is actually we have to sign in. Um, don't really want to do that. Save a copy to my computer, and then you'd run through and save it that way. Okay, so I'm going to open up the other. In this case, I will not save it. And intervention. Uh, we'll just go to the first one without the frame. Um, oops, first, I forgot the Z. Okay. So now you can see that this is um, it's too small, and and I could go back into Rhino and go to a top view and say, okay, well, what is the width? And um, be fairly accurate. Um, so you know, 13 inches and 7 eighths. Um, so I could go back and type that into Slicer. Um, sorry, I have to <laughs> eight seven five. Okay. Nope. Oh. I'll just hit Tab. And so it's going to scale it um, up. So yeah, that should be pretty close. But if I want to be exact, I want to know exactly what the distance is. I want to know exactly what it's asking for in terms of a, a, a width and everything. So um, I'm going to go back to the other one that I created. I won't save this. Hit the A. And I'll go with open. Oh, of course, I forgot. Z. Z up. I don't know why the default isn't just Z up. Anyway. Um, open so here we go and um, so we have the same issue here we're brought in but I know then the width is 17 exactly okay so then it scaled it up there we go um, then what I would do is um, for this because I want you to explore uh, interlocking slices and some other construction techniques here. Um, I'm going to select chipboard for this. You can create one for the task board and the width of the task board, although I think the widths are fairly similar. Um, so you can double check that in terms of the material um, and those specs and adjust that width, but you know that's the terms of creating this it's going to be the 18 by 32 unless you use a smaller laser cutter um, and um, basically it's just adjusting the thickness here it's set to 16th in this case okay um, so then we did the scale um, so let's try interlocking slices um, so that's sort of interesting and I can change the count of this I can change um, the spacing and so forth here, slice distribution, here it's set by count, so I can increase the count in one axis or the other, so I'm just clicking this up, and I don't know, maybe this is, I don't know, 10 and 20. You can also um, change it by distance, so just divide it up equally, I'm going to stick to um, by count. Um, some of the other things that you can do um, with this and depending how this works out is I can select one of these and move the slice around so if I wanted to get in and really fine-tune or create a different um, kind of pattern and kind of open up some areas I can do that just uh, by dragging the slices around um, and you can, of course, do that in all the directions there. Or I could just 
delete it altogether if I wanted just to get rid of it. So I just hit my delete key. Um, the other thing that you could do with this is um, work with the direction of the slices. Right now it's basically X, Y cutting straight through. Um, but if I collect, uh, select slice direction, I'm going to get these orbitals around the object and I can change the angles. So if you want to work with that, that's um, another possibility. Once you start working with this um, and really playing around with these angles, it's very difficult, at least for me, to get it back to a simple um, XY cut. So it's it's you know something to play around with um, definitely, but also just kind of be aware that you might get lost. And if you want to get back to a fairly straightforward cutting. Um, strategy then I would just start over just bring it in again and work with it that way but um, should then be able to again make selections here work with different slices if you want to move them around or delete some of them just to kind of play around um, with the, it as a modeling technique. Again, this is for, this is basically like an abstract kind of massing um, strategy here. There are other techniques, of course, as well. Um, one of the reasons I wanted you to use um, flat surfaces is that you would be able then to fairly easily um, select folded panels. And so in this case, it's just um, almost a uh, um, taking this as kind of a wrap and then you can see here the pattern just unfolding that wrap <clears throat> and then you have a control of the kind of seam and the kind of joints so if you look here there are different options for joint type um, whether you wanted uh, multi or laced I guess you could um, lace them together with a string or something the seams um, puzzle where they fit together like a puzzle or one is uh, people used a lot is gear um, so you see there's these little notches that are there that will fit in once you've kind of fold this uh, into shape um, and you can kind of work through um, these but I think uh, I don't know, gear seems to be one that works um, fairly well um, if there are issues um, with the model Usually you could take care of that um, with uh, uh, just the physical modeling of putting it together. Sometimes, like if these are really uh, twisted or something, and there might be some issues in terms of the seaming. Um, but you could make some selections, uh, parts too large for material. And so this is something, again, that you could kind of fix um, in AutoCAD, or you can also um, add remove seams so if I wanted to add a seam so that I can break down uh, the material then you can do that um, I'm kind of doing this blindly but basically it's clicking some of these folds turning them into seams until the error is fixed I'm not having much success here. But that would be the strategy to try to to try to fix it. If not, again, it's something that you could um kind of fix more quickly in um AutoCAD. Okay. Um so that would be an issue there. I'm just going to add a few more seams. Try to open it up. So I'm probably not the right one here. So this might take a little time. And that's something that you'll have to work with depending on what your form is. So I'm having a little difficulty here, but um, 
I know I have the general shapes. I could get the model um, basically to work. Um, so there are others. Um, 3D slices. Um, uh, radial slices. Some of these are just a, a little wacky and not super useful. Um, the basic ones are stacked, interlocked. Um, folded panels, uh, 3D slices, I guess I haven't worked with very much. So folded panels, radial slices, interlocked slices. So let's go back to the interlocked. That's one of the ones I definitely want you to work with. And maybe I'll just increase the count. I'll select. Okay. And um, now we'll go to... Um, exporting this get plans and so you can see there's potentially a lot of consolidation that could uh, occur here so once you get into AutoCAD you kind of nest these together move around and nest these together uh, a little bit more um, right a little bit more like this where they're really stacked uh, nicely together once you bring this into AutoCAD again we have this kind of square base that's part of the just the reference so we could scale it accordingly um, in slicer I would recommend either just to move these to the side or just go ahead and delete these that you know that are part of this frame, which are these really slender pieces, um, and just keep the pieces that um, belong to the main intervention. Um, that way you're not cutting extra material and so forth. So it's one way to kind of quickly get around, uh, get around that. So DXF, export to computer. I'll select the same date intervention okay so now that is exported and again you can go back to the assembly steps to assist you once you have them cut and so you can start to decipher which piece goes first at least it, as it's recommended here once you get started you'll find that this process of assembly goes very quickly um, it's just a matter of kind of getting going, and um, it'll, it'll start to materialize fairly quickly. Can run through all of those. Okay. Um, just going to open. <sighs> um, where did those export? This is the wrong folder. Okay. So let's say the intervention. So these are the DXF files. Let me just go back. I'm going to open this in a window. And I'm just going to drag these out of the zip file. And after that, I could delete this zip file. Hit it. And then I could select, uh, these are the separate sheets then. Uh, you can bring all those, open those up in AutoCAD. I'll right click, open with AutoCAD. Might take just a sec to open up. And then basically uh, you would run through the same steps that you have in order to prep the file for um, laser cutting. Um, so using the template file that has all the correct layers on it and so forth. Um, so there we go. Um, also, this comes in just the way it does it. It's probably the way I set this up, actually. Um, you may want to change this. Um, flip these so the width is 32 and the length. Um, is 18. Um, so then it comes in horizontally oriented or landscape oriented for you. Because um, I know that's the way they like to work with it in the shop. And so then when you go to get plans, let's use the chipboard. If they're horizontally or landscape oriented, um, so that's better. The other thing that you can just do if you have it like this is just um, rotate everything. So type 
everything in rotate. Left everything. Origin point. Um, uh, again, for uh, ortho. Um, so basically from here you would work with your um, laser cut template file. Um, I don't know if I have that handy right here. Um, but run through the same steps in terms of um, correcting the layer or if you wanted to move some of these around I would just make sure you select all of it. Sometimes it's if you're doing a lot of moving around, it makes sense just to go ahead and type in group and group this all together, although you have trouble um, changing the layers and everything. Um, so here you could just move this around, kind of really dial it in, in terms of how these are spaced. Again, here, these are part of the frame um, that we had created. So I would just go ahead and delete those parts because you don't, you don't need to create that. Um, and the other thing that can be handy because you can see that these are line segments is to go ahead and <coughs> join those lines so they're continuous so type in join and so that should pretty much take care of that so it's one continuous polyline um, you could try to just do that you know take a big window select them all and see what happens you want to just be careful that it doesn't include lines that you don't want to be uh, joined there. Um, let me see if I can find that file quick. See, file management is important. So documents. So this is one from the last project that I know is correct. So I could I could use this. This has all the, the correct files in it from the last project. So I could basically run through the same steps that you did again for the last project. Um, Control C and Control V. And I just want to make sure all of these are um, in terms of the properties. I will just type in properties. Oh. Sometimes I don't want to get into searching for the exact uh, uh, button so I'll just do that color again you want to make sure all this is set by layer there were layers on this you'll have to you know this will be changed once you kind of um, go through that. once you start matching up your perimeter cuts and your engraving and so forth um, so color line type by layer Type scale. Um, zero by layer by layer and thickness. So with that, you should then be able to go into match properties again and get into your various cuts. Um, what I tend to do if I don't know what's going on here, I'll, um, as I mentioned in the previous. If there's a perimeter cut, let's say final perimeter cuts, I will just draw like a line. So I'm just going to draw a line. So everything that I want to be a perimeter cut, then I'll match those properties. So the source object. And, you know, that'll work through. This is why joining makes a lot of sense here is that you end up selecting all these little bits here. And that just drives me crazy. So I, for me, I would go ahead and... Do that and then um, join it basically and then go ahead and uh, make your selections it makes things go a lot quicker I know that these are part of the frame so I'll leave those out 
those would be deleted and um, then the text would be um, so you do that for all of them and of course the text would be engraving light or deep or how, whatever you, you'd want it to be and then you'd go ahead and match those properties and you'd still have all the cuts matching up with the other cuts it, it important that these are there because they again these match up to the pieces that uh, uh, interlock with them and so they again it's basically creates a big 3d puzzle um, so uh, once you do that you can um, again nest these together a little bit more so you're saving more raw material for future um, projects and cutting um, and basically it's selecting and working through the interlocking technique um, and one other technique I, I, would, I would highly recommend working with um, folded planes um, in this case and you'd walk through the same steps to get plans and so forth okay that'll do it um, for this um, video tutorial and um, we'll follow up with the next one thanks guys